We got ourselves another solo leveling episode review. Episode 7 review, my bad, by H. Brandon. Let's see what he has to say. Jin Wu went to an S rank dungeon and nearly died. That now, that S rank dungeon, I wonder if there's like. Does an instance dungeon scale the same way as a regular dungeon, right? Like, are they actually comparable? Because I know that we only fought the Cerberus in the beginning, and that is like. You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's like a tutorial boss, right? Like, sorry, not a boss. Like, if you compare it to the previous Subway instance dungeon, they, the Cerberus might as well be a goblin or a red lichen. So I wonder if it's, like, actually comparable. Like, this is an s rank gate or an instance dungeon are more nerfed. I'm not sure. That was one hell of not even the full thing. We took down Cerberus, and yeah. Cerberus took us down a few times. But I appreciate our boy being like, hey, man... <laughs> I'll catch you another time. It's one hell of a reward, and if it really works to the degree it's saying, we can cure his mom with yeah. an elixir of life. Cures all diseases. Incredible. Insane. But I mean, we assume he's probably in the B-rank area. Is he? Some people are saying like, yeah, he's like C-rank now. Nah, yeah, he's B-rank. I think it's kind of like if the author didn't specifically state it, then it's a bunch of power scalers just fucking throwing shit at each other saying, No, he's B rank. No, he's low B rank. No, he's high C rank. It's like, shut the fuck up. No one really knows, but he is within that range, right? He is kind of within that B rank range. That's at least what Jinho was thinking in terms of looking at his, like, capabilities. But the thing is, he did have a teleport out. He had a way to get out of this whole situation that he, and he saved fucked from it the up. previous dungeon. Unfortunately, we end up dropping it when we're trying to use it. And so does that mean we just lose it forever? Or is it like around that we can pick it up, right? Because I feel like that's such an important, valuable item that we should not lose. He's forced to, well, just go absolutely ballistic. And we take down Cerberus. We take down the pooch. The little guardian of the demon's castle here. Someone says Sung Jin Woo was like an eye hunter because he keeps stabbing monsters in the eye to kill them. Like, I think that's how we took, took out Kasaka. Maybe? I'm not really sure. But that's definitely how we took out the spider and the Cerberus. And there's three things we need to collect from said castle if yeah. we want to craft the elixir of life. We got the recipe. And that is going to be insane because he says, not today, bro. And I appreciate it. The guy's a little crazy at this point, which, I mean, it kind of makes sense, everything he's gone through. But this was an absolutely insane episode that it was- You know what we fucked up? Like, you know how we used the key to enter the demon castle dungeon or something? Sure, and we took out Cerberus and we leave? What if the key disappears? Like, we're locked out. It's like, nah, you're supposed to enter and clear. You can't just, like, go in and out like that. No, it's a one-time thing. So if he left, like, the dungeon is closed. Wouldn't that be fucked up? I wasn't expecting to be insane because I was, as I always say, I don't watch the show for the action like some people claim everyone who likes soul leveling does. The first I feel like majority of the people that watch this show watch this show for the action and the power fantasy. Because, like, you're not watching this for a good written plot. Right? It's not a big brain show. Sure, there are some mysteries and clues here and there. But like the majority of the people watching this is just to see Sung Jin Woo do hype shit. And for us to go, ho, 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 wow, so cool, Sung Jin Woo. But there are some big brain you know, content creators like A.H. Brandon that appreciates more of the, you know, a little bit less recognized parts of the story. Like the plot, I guess. First half of this episode, just as exciting to me as anything in the second half. They're just two different types of excitement. I love the menu stuff. I love learning about, oh, if yeah. he doubles and does twice as much of any one little stat got the special quest. Do, so 10 push-ups, do 20. That's where it caps out. Get these bonus quests, hidden items that will pop up. I love all that stuff. I love seeing Jinho basically try to say, hey, bro, I need 19 more dungeons. I'm crafting a team. I'm trying to be a guild master. All that stuff is incredible, just as much as the insane Cerberus boss fight. This show is awesome. Top to bottom, hands down, one of the best shows we are going to watch this year. Now, I do have a full live reaction to today's Check Patreon out, guys. episode over on my Patreon. So if you want to see my full uncut thoughts, they're over there if you're interested. I do want to quickly share probably one of the funniest comments I've ever gotten on my channel in the history okay. of me having a YouTube channel. So last week, I got this incredibly intelligent individual who... <laughs> Is he about I've to roast him? the code on why solo leveling has haters. It's because... The Japanese VA is meaningless. I'm too busy reading to even hear the voice actor or see the animation. So what if they crank up the volume to 11 out of 100? Do you really think any voice actor is coughing up blood? 
I've been watching anime since the 60s, and I've yet to hear a better voice actor than Steve Blum. Mr. Confess. Some people okay. can't read. I unironically got this comment where someone says, how are we supposed to pay attention when basically we're, it doesn't matter this or that because I'm too busy reading. I mean, you can so boldly I mean, I feel like that's a skill issue, right? You admit that you can't pay attention to something if you have that, to read subtitles. Like, like, isn't that just like a skill issue? Like your brain just doesn't work fast enough to like comprehend the voice acting matching with what you're reading. You know what I mean? So like, Judge based off of this, this guy can't appreciate music either. Any music with lyrics, his brain is just gonna fucking blow up because like the lyrics and the music and, and the, the, the lyrics and the instrumentals are gonna fuck his brain up. That might be one of the best cell phones I've ever seen in my entire life of doing YouTube, but holy hell, man. We've cracked the code. Soul leveling, it sucks because apparently you have to read subtitles. Why do, why do the Japanese voice actors even try? But just watch the fucking English dub, bro. No, I, I'm surprised that, like, he can even, like, follow the anime scenes, like, while reading the subtitles. Because he's saying that he can't listen to the voice acting. So, bro has to basically watch on fucking mute. But, uh, jokes aside, this was another banger episode. So, first things first, let's talk about the main attraction that most people want to hear. That is the Cerberus boss fight. The key immediately looked like Satan's door. Thing looked demonic. Thing looked insane. And it came from a blessed box, by the way. What would a cursed box give us? S rank level dungeon. We go into this bad boy and we're met with the hounds of death. And they were insane, man. Lucky for us, it wasn't like the spider where every little attack we did didn't even cut it. There was only a certain spot we could attack. No, we could slice anywhere. It just did hardly anything. And there's just so many brutal shots. Like when you hear A rank or S rank or something that feels like, oh, that should pretty much one-shot you or come close to doing so. Yeah. This show makes me feel like the threats and the scale of what we're fighting actually match the power. I think Hot take. Hot take. I think that that's bullshit. I think what H. Brandon just said now, I disagree with it. Because Sung Jun Woo got hit like 20 fucking times by the Cerberus. And I understand that he used full restore in between that. But like, you think that we would get like insta hit. That's the type of threat that I was hoping for. You get brushed once, your HP fucking drops, right? But like, I swear to God, bro is getting slapped around, getting hit left, right, left, right. And his HP decreases a little bit by little, little, bit by little. and like, Maybe that's because, well, no, the monster even had the red fucking nameplate, right? It was like a higher level monster that we're not supposed to be even fighting yet. So, and he, even at the Kasuka fight, he took a lot of fucking hits. I think taking these hits and making Sung Jing Woo like suffer adds in to like this, I don't know, the, the, the gory violence and making sure that this guy is suffering so that you guys, the audience doesn't feel like he's just getting away too easily. But honestly, against the Cerberus fight, I was actually kind of shocked at how many hits that we took and how little the HP was draining. Maybe it's just me, but I don't know. I felt like it should have been more of a threat. Like you got fucking bit once, HP should drop by a half. Like it should get fucking slashed. I think if you look at him when he was going into his first dungeon alone and the creatures he was fighting, they were small. Someone's gonna fucking comment now and say, <clears throat> actually, there's that skill when you are 30% HP, you take 50% less damage, and Sung Jun Woo activated his debuff that, you know, fucking, I, I don't fucking know, the negative 50% stats didn't even work, right? But you know what I mean. Like, even despite the willpower, like, skill, the passive of the endurance of, like, 30% HP, you take less damage, I felt like the Cerberus wasn't as threatening. Even the fucking goblins, like, when we were, like, weaker, they like, their damages, like, meant something. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think I'm nitpicking either. I, I just saw him get clapped around, bitten, like, multiple times, thrown around, stomped, and it's like, he still got, like, more than half of HP. I'm like, huh, is our vitality just that cracked? I don't know. Small in comparison to any of the bosses that he's gone up against. And when they attack versus what these things attack, like, he gets tossed. When he gets bit by a giant hound of hell, you feel like his arm's ripping off. Hell, at one point, I thought his arm was completely... I don't know if it was, if it was just dangling because it was so broken. It's a good thing he has some full recoveries because otherwise he'd be shit out of luck. That's all I'm saying. But every time I would see these attacks and I'd see he has like 3,600 health in this fight. Yeah. Every one of these attacks was doing like 500, 600 health. Some <laughs> one six? That should have been fucking one shot. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. 
But if you're gonna give me an S rank fucking dungeon and you see a red plate monster, something that's clearly the strongest thing we've ever fought, I don't think we should be able to take five, six hits. I feel like one or two and you're done and we should get the fuck out. Sometimes it was a thousand and I'm like, there's no way in hell he's winning. I fully expected a retreat, 100%. There Me too. There was no way he was going to win. He and he is the opposite of Kaj's hero. Sung Jin doesn't really plan, does he? He just fucking goes in there and he just, he just starts screaming and he wins, is what I've noticed. Even the Kasaka dungeon, should he have gone down there? I think it was great for character development moment to make sure that this guy is not a coward, that he's moving forward, that he's willing to take risks. But goddamn, the risk that we're like taking right now is fucking insane. He does have some good buffs, like, you know, in terms of he was getting a lot of stabs in and obviously paralysis, draining health, different didn't even work. stats that can stack and everything. But it when didn't you work. drop your get out of jail free card and he's hiding behind a wall, buying anything he can from the store, a couple of healing potions isn't going right. to turn the tide. And the idea that... Early into the episode, we learn about his detox, which basically means in normal life, he can't get drunk, which is what it is. Some people Bro can't enjoy anything in life anymore. He has to just embrace sobriety. Even like coffee. I wonder if coffee, caffeine, like any other stimulants, I don't know what's considered poisonous. Alcohol is considered poisonous to the body. But like caffeine and other stimulants, like if he were to take Molly, what would happen? Would those effects like actually work on him? Or would it be considered like poison to his body? I don't know what is considered poison, right? And that would determine if that drug is actually worked on your on on that or not. People would probably just jump off a bridge right then and there. I have a few in my comments section who probably will pop up about that one. I love the fact that they established this detox, and even though I knew it was a thing, I yeah. didn't trust that potion. It's basically like, hey, yeah, I I couldn't make the fucking connection in my head. I should have I should have been faster with this. When I saw that, you know, you take like damaged muscle, it's like what? What? Who the fuck? would like take this potion and i should have been like wait beer scene of course be like 20 percent more durable but 35 percent less strong permanently and i'm like nope that sounds he is a yeah. bigger gambler than me granted you that is true we don't like obviously it's category poison so we should be able to detox it but there's no like complete guarantee that it would work right so that gamble it's permanent minus 35 percent by the way that was an insane gamble and Thank you, the Flocks, for another tier one subs. I appreciate the two months in a row, man, man. You can probably argue the fact that, well, if he didn't drink it, he probably would have died anyway. So negative 35% for life if he lives. I mean, that's worth the gamble if it doesn't. De it's still better than negative 50% of all our points to fucking Kushida from Anakoji in Classroom of the Elite. He talks it. Lucky for him, he basically gets like thicker armor in terms of his skin, so it's 20% more durable, and he got to basically detox the penalty out of his system. Very lucky, but bigger gambler than I. I would not have drunk that. That's that's just me anyway. And honestly, I wouldn't have even gone into that fucking castle, bro. Ain't we didn't go into that castle, but that dungeon itself. That shit was crazy, but I guess it did pay off. We got like five levels and we got other items as well, I'm sure it's going to be valuable. The animation when he goes just completely balls to the wall is insane. I love how the fact that there's at no point during this fight did I think, oh man, he's better or bigger or stronger than this boss. I agree with that. I felt like we were getting tossed around like a ragdoll. Every, every scene was just like desperate moments. I really thought it came down to skill luck and honestly just perseverance just the idea of not giving willpower up and just do he was in a little bit of plot armor right you you could argue that there's a it's a little bit of plot armor right like this is somewhere he shouldn't have been but he went in there very risky he did figure out you know to abuse the uh the poison uh, like the detox thing to use the kasaka's you know venom to win at the end but still you would think that it's like it's a little bit of bullshit. It's not so bad. Cornered animal, raging and doing everything he could in his power to take down something that meant him harm. And honestly, the difference between this fight and the snake fight, it doesn't just feel like he's mindlessly slashing at a big beast and the big beast is mindlessly attacking. When you look at the attack patterns of that snake and you... I will say the one mindless part was the sand attack move. I think that's when we were buying cover to buy the potions, right? Sung Jin will basically like kick the ground and it was a huge sand attack. And then the Cerberus was like, oh, and then Sung Jin just like walked around and like hid behind a rock and he just couldn't find him. Cerberus was like, what happened? Where did he go? I don't know what's happening anymore. I'm like, this is kind of silly. You look at the attack patterns of a three headed mutt. 
completely different animation and production style the flames the buildings crumbling in the background just so good top to bottom but honestly man like just that victory in him just holy hell literally early into the episode the sisters complimenting him damn you had a big payday you must have had a really good team because you came back pretty much not wounded at all and then we end this episode with him just bleeding out yeah he gets the recovery like he doesn't have holes in him anymore but i'm I thought he was going for it. I thought he was right then and there going to go into that cast. And I'm like, don't do it, bro. Yeah, no, but we like got to get the fuck out. This show's more than just the cool action. The idea of, like, these two friends kind of growing. Like, I feel like Jinwoo doesn't want to be friends with Jinho. But at the same time, Jinho just feels like such a likable guy that I'm really hoping... Jinho's a very likable guy. He's a very well-mannered kid. Especially someone that's... You know, he's rich as fuck. He's a trust fund kid. Jinwoo straight up says, I'm not going to help a random trust fund kid. And the characteristics of a trust fund kid is not too good, right? The representation of these rich spoiled brats are pretty terrible in any kind of media. But Jinho is actually a really good kid. And you got to understand that Jin Jinho has been like betrayed in the past. I've right? been treated pretty harshly. I'm sure he has a lot of trust issues. So, you know, just this random trust fund kid, even though what we done in the dungeon together was cool and nice, it could kind of seem like he's just sucking up to leech off of him. But at the end of the day, the <laughs> money talks, right? It's the... <laughs> It's the ridiculous amount of money that's offered, the valuation of the company, the guild that we're going to set up if we clear like 20 or 19 C-rank dungeons that really compels him at the end of the day. Because he's like even asking Jinnah, his sister, like, yo, what would you do with all this money? He's like, hmm, yeah, maybe we should do this shit. So I guess the moral of the story is money just wins. Hoping he just like will join up with him and work with him because we have a bit of a target painted on our back. So the brother of the guy who I- Hwang dong Su, that's right. Mr. American that's been poached, right? He, he used to be Korean, but not Japanese. I said that, hold up, why isn't this Japan? And I realized, oh shit, this is an anime based in Korea. What am I doing right now? So yes, he's a Korean S rank hunter that's been poached to Japan. So I wonder because he's been poached, if he counts as the seven S rank hunters in Korea, you know what I mean? Because even if he is Korean, he's technically American, you know, patriot right now. So it's like, is he part of the seven or not? I don't know. I guess was the leader of the whole group that tried to kill us. Uh, he wants to kill us. He wants to kill these two guys. Um, pretty much saying that they were murdered. And Bro's not going to figure us out, though. Because what he sees in the papers, the whatever Laura brought him, right? Jin Ho looks the same. But Jin Mu's like profile, his ID... Dude, because he still looks like, you know, before he got out of the glow up, there's no shot. He should be able to recognize who Sung Jin Woo is. And it's a damn good thing that his schedule is full for the foreseeable future because his uh, murderous revenge had to be scheduled in for another day. And he hopes they're still alive. And I'm like, that is the coldest line ever. I don't think you're going to be able to kill our main character, but, you know, our new friend to be might be. Bro even asked, like, what's the penalties for, like, overseas murder? It's like, goddamn. Different story. But holy shit, man, I like what they're doing. And I think my favorite part is how people are noticing that things are a little weird because initially the idea of like, why are you so concerned about a couple of low rank adventurers surviving? People die all the time. They probably ran for their life. Yeah, but the boss. But the boss was cleared, right? That was one contention manager who was like, it doesn't matter who cares. But then it's like, oh, they survived? What's their names? Sung Jin Woo again. It's like, hmm, maybe we have to go back to the drawing board and bring that magic device to, you know, see his power level, see if it's grown beyond 10, right? Boss is dead. Okay, that starts to get a little more weird, but he has really expensive items. That could have, you know, compensated. Okay, but the person that we just interviewed about the whole instance with the crazy ass dungeon, same guy. Now you're starting to make me yeah, a little concerned. This is a pattern if now. he does get an elixir of life and cures his mother, who doesn't seem to be able to be cured in terms of the medicine of their world like that's probably her life for the rest of her life if they start pointing out these types of things like oh the kid who's been in two really weird dungeons that don't make sense on how he survived now somehow his mother is magically cured of something that doctors couldn't do ah and, oh the brother of you know the dude who died in one of his dungeons also now is dead or it's very suspicious. Everything keeps pointing back towards Sung Jin Mu. Would that be ultimately a bad thing? I, I guess we do want to try to lay low and make sure no one really knows about our leveling system because that's not going to be good. What if they, they like capture us and start doing tests on us, right? Or maybe it's targeting. You know, there's True. a lot of things that are going to be like, they're going to start connecting the dots a lot more, and I'm interested to see how his life's going to change. Obviously, the weight of killing is still on his mind, and you can see how different his personality is and how quickly he's able to adjust. He makes a couple comments every time, right? He's like, hmm, 
Am I changing? Not just physically, but mentally too. And he's becoming more cold and ruthless. And I do like this. Uh, it's not a descent into madness, but it's definitely better than the mindset that he had in like episode one, two, or even three. Right? He was like a he, he was like a fucking pussy. Right? He's fucking weak. He's just like a well. He had the courage of the weak, but he couldn't really cross that bridge until like episode six, right? Where he just fucking just started killing people. So I hope he continues down this spiral of edginess. But then eventually, like the common cliche is the love interest is going to step in and try to make sure everything is in harmony and balance. So who's that going to be? Again, it's not going to be Juhi. It's going to be Chaehyun. When are we going to meet her? Not in this season, man. That's with that. I just don't even know what he's going to be like when it comes to like a hundred chapters in the source material later for a character like this and how different and how you won't even think he was the same guy as the start. But great. Right now, I, I straight up like if you compare episode, I think four, four was the real turning point. That was the battle against Kasuka and everything beyond that. Episode five was like, holy shit, you actually look fundamentally different. That was like, OK, you're not recognizable anymore. And then. I guess episode six was like, okay, now his like even mental psyche has completely changed. Great episode nonetheless. We do have a recap next week, so we'll be back in two weeks for the channel videos. Yeah. But uh, it's gonna be good. Sucks, man. We got a fucking recap. Lame. So we can take a two week break, but please go sub to Mr. H Brandon's channel. Like his videos if you did, he always gives us good breakdowns. But yes, two week hiatus, but it's fine. It's fine. We got a lot of enemies to still want, and that just means that we'll get one more week of solo leveling. When all the other animes are done, I guess, but it doesn't really... It's still the same fucking 12 episodes, if you know what I mean, right?